everyone. Welcome to the special Cube conversation here in Palo Alto, California, Cube Studios. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, founder of SiliconANGLE Media. We are here for some exclusive news around security audits, blockchain smart contracts, and a hot new startup, Amber Data. We have their chief operating officer, Tung, Tung Tong Gong, who's here. C chief operating officer, Amber Data. Great to see you. You guys, I've interviewed Sean Douglas, the CEO, founder, uh, before, and when he was really getting the technology going, Amazing progress, we have some exclusive uh, discoveries here. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me here. And uh, it's, it's awesome, we've done so much in the past couple weeks and uh, I'm really excited to announce that we have taken security audits, automated that, to be able to provide automated at scale security audits for all the smart contracts on Ethereum throughout platform. This has been a huge problem. We've been covering it you know, for the past year with video, but also on the blogs. Ethereum specifically has been the developer chain of choice. People are using Ethereum, it's literally programming on it. On that, and that's where a lot of the D apps, decentralized apps, which mm -hmm. we think is going to be a tsunami of, and that's, we're big bullish on it. But the problem is, is that everyone rushed with these ICOs and they didn't think about hey, we better make sure our token generating event works because they got to do a smart contract on that. And then ultimately these marketplaces that will be emerging from the apps through the communities will be a lot of smart contracts as the transaction of choice. This is what is the benefit of token economics. The problem is security. The security audits have been a pain in the butt. They've been expensive mm -hmm. and there's been a time lag in getting it done. So you got a time, time factor, too slow, too expensive, and it was last minute. Right. This has been a huge problem. Are you saying that you solved that problem? Well, yeah, kind of. So I'll give you some stats. There are about 7.8 mil million to 8 million um, smart contracts on chain today. On average, it's about 500, 600 smart contracts gets deployed every day into mainnet Ethereum. And uh, so what we've done, we talked to a lot of security teams that's um, in this space, and uh, at the end of the day, everybody used the same tools, set of tools to perform security audits. What we have done is we programmatically uh, did that so we can run security uh, audits on every smart contract on chain. So we launched this feature last Friday. What we did is we picked the top 2,000 smart contracts based on transaction volume. On the main net. On the main net and we performed uh, the audits on those. And, uh, and last night, yeah, three days later, we performed all 8,000 smart contracts that's being created and deployed in the past 90 days. So the top 2,000 active ones, and then the 8,000 uh, more recently deployed ones, we perform security audits on those. So this is pretty incredible. So I want to make sure I get this right, because I think if this is the case, this is the first ever automation or DevOps-like approach to smart contract audits and security. So let me just kind of slow down, if you don't mind. So today, most people have to go in and manually look at code reviews mm -hmm. or use some tooling to do that. And then they get like a report. This has been doing on a console. I know many, Osho does that, many more do it. And they're bringing tools to the market uh, there too. But I don't think anyone's actually automated at volume. So you're saying you're automating, ingesting data from the chain. Mm -hmm. We'll analyze the bytecode as well as the source code to identify uh, vulnerabilities and issues, things like integer overflow um, in, into their code. And we actually assigned a uh, custom, we have own scoring system mm -hmm. to score basically the vulnerability exposure of the smart contract. Okay, so I want to, I want to just kind of push back on that because I'm skeptical. So you do byte review, bytecode and, byte and source code review and then it's a black box and you type up a report or you actually, do you flag the code itself? Do you surface it automatically? Does, does that happen automatically? So take me through what you do manually and what happens with the computers. What is automated? It's, everything's automated. So we, we, uh, we, use, we, we integrated the tools that every security expert use in the space today to run the security audits on the smart contract and the bytecode and then we flag the particular source code and function calls that's um, flagged with the issue. That's in the code itself. That's in the code itself. And that surfaced through our website, through our um, console, and you can actually see it. You can search on any smart contract and the console dashboard mm. will show you yeah. the real time live streaming mm. events of your smart contract function calls as well as the that's This is amazing. So, okay, so this means, this means that you can save a lot of time. Mm. Love this feature, this is, this is exciting. This is actually first news I've ever heard of this, so I want to make sure I get it right. 
How many contracts can you do? How fast does it take? So you mentioned you've ingested on last week stuff off the chain. How many mm -hmm. contracts was that? We did last week uh, 2,000, and then up to last night we did, finished 8,000 uh, smart contract scans. We're continuing to do that for every smart contract on chain. How fast is it? I remember back when I was you know, learning how to code for the first time back in the old days. You hit press a button, they have a compiler, and you got a bug in line, syntax error, there it is. That's normal kind of old school computer science syntax compiler, interpreter, whatever you want to call it. It sounds like you're doing something similar. It's the same kind of speed. Mm -hmm. It's code review, analysis of the contract security yeah. through the tools. How fast is it? I mean, how long does it take to do a review of one smart contract, for instance? Uh, actually, I don't know that. I will say minutes. Not, not days. days. No, right, minutes. So it's not like yeah. it goes out and you know hourglass and it'll check your email, be there. It happens pretty much on the fly. It happens pretty much on the fly, real time. So how many contracts can you guys do in a day? We've done 8,000 in three days, so uh, a lot. <laughs> 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 and that we have 10 machines running right now. As so you speaking. throw some cloud at it, scale yeah, exactly. up. Exactly, scale so up. Scaling out is easy to do, just yeah. go. Our goal is to basically make it very easy for developers to understand the state and health of the smart contract. And then they can go find consultant, you know, mm -hmm. experts to fix those vulnerabilities and yeah, issues. Yeah, this, this is going to be a rising tide. I think, you know, rising tide floats all boats when you have these emerging markets. You know, you move to the next problem, uh, and, and you, you do, Jeff Frick always says that in theCUBE, and, and he's right. You take away security, you're now enabling this tool for these consultants to actually add more value. Exactly. Is that the focus? I mean, do you guys even know who's going to use this tool yet? Obviously, this is a game changer. I mean, I would, if I'm a data scientist, I love this, but also, I'm a trader. I might want the data. Uh, I'm a risk management, audit, compliance person. So, I mean, who, who, you guys? Yeah, like, Amber Data, well, our mission has always been providing the enabling infrastructure, enabling tool sets to allow developer, to allow operators, to allow the industry, to allow business to adopt blockchain. That's always been our mission. And uh, we have built the Splunk, like, uh, you know, search and uh, a feature for you know blockchain. We have built APM. We have built the similar mixed panel. It's all about providing access to data and to information to allow everyone to have a better understanding, what better transparency into the state and health of the mm -hmm. blockchain, the state and health of their uh, smart contracts. Mm -hmm. So that's you know in line with. So talk about the do. scoring thing because okay, I love this automation. I think that's a game changer. So congratulations. This is the first I've heard of it. And I think this might be the first news in the industry out there. How does it work beyond that? What else do you guys do? Are you ingesting? Are you adding overlays to it? I mean, what is the, the focus next? I mean, you're ingesting it, you're doing some security audits. Where does so, it go from there? So we're actually working with the Web3 Data Foundation so the Web3 Data Foundation is building a decentralized data marketplace to allow everyone in the ecosystem to list, subscribe, consume, distribute, monetize uh, data assets that's generated by blockchain and data that's on blockchain. So what's the URL for that, Web3? Web3data.org. Three the number or three? The three the number. So web3number.data.org. Yeah. Uh, data data yeah. Okay, and, and is that an open community? Is that a foundation? Yes, that's a nonprofit foundation, and I believe they're launching a token, Web3 Data Token, and Amber Data is working with the Web3 Data Foundation as a launch partner to utilize the data ingestion pipeline we have built and to serve up all the data for everyone to have access to it. Okay, so what's your business model at Amber Data? Are you going to have your own token? Are you going to use the foundation as the token holding place? Can you just take us through the relationship of Amber Data with the foundation, because I mean, I get the foundation, but what you're doing here is you're essentially building IT operations into the blockchain, mm -hmm. which is, and scaling things with automation, which certainly is only going to get better with more compute and AI and other cool things. So I love that. How do you make money? Is it a token model? Is it just classic, you get paid? So what's the relationship? Is the foundation issuing tokens? Do you have your own token? Take us through <laughs> that. So the Web3 Data Foundation is the one issuing the token, and we are the launch partner. So we are using uh, the, blockchain agnostic data ingestion pipeline that mm -hmm. we, uh, 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 we can ingest all the data and we're building together, building the data marketplace mm -hmm. using smart contract to enable everyone to list, curate, consume, distribute, and monetize the data. It's because if you think about it, right, um, data on blockchain is just a fraction of 
the data out there. Mm. And as DAP development going on, as a trading um, application going on, there's a lot of data going, so it's going to be generated by blockchain as well. And those data is yeah. now getting captured, analyzed, and uh, utilized today. Yeah. And uh, I think today as a trader, investor, or as a developer, uh, people don't have access to this data, have data-driven decision to help them continuously yeah. improve uh, whether it's application or investment decisions. So the data marketplace will enable everyone yeah. to, to be able to have that access. And also might enable more faster acceleration of decentralized applications. Exactly. Which, you know, Fred Kruger and I were talking on Twitter, I mean Facebook about this, that we think that's the, the killer app is going to be the, the, the tsunami of apps coming. But all these chain problems are out there. So it's a little bit of a kind of a resetting going on in the industry. I obviously see that with some of the pricing and funding and everything, but for the most part we see a big market coming. So I got to ask you the, the, the obvious question from there is, which chains are you supporting? You mentioned mainnet, mm -hmm. which is great for Ethereum. Yeah, today, what are, what today we support Ethereum mainnet and Rinkeby, the testnet. We also support Aeon's mainnet and testnet. Um, we also support Stellar. Uh, we're working on uh, EOS and uh, um, Tron as well. And so we have open source our data collector to allow community to contribute to that. And um, we'll use Web3 Data Token to incentivize the community to contribute, to verify, to enrich the data. So I got to ask you the security question. Maybe this might be from, uh, for more of the, the nerds and the geeks developing down in the product level, but maybe you can get it. Is, is security is huge. So I'm skeptical, you're doing scoring, but can you be hacked? What's the security answer to that? Like, well, if she's controlling the score, you know, I might want to spoof the uh, code and take over and say it's okay, you know? The the code we, we get is actually on-chain. It's the code that you deploy on-chain. So good luck spoofing <laughs> the yeah. data is on, on, you know, on blockchain. So that's the whole point of blockchain. Yeah, so it's, it's already answered. Yeah, so yeah. It's a dumb question, I got that. <laughs> All right, thanks. I'm like, oh, that's dumb questions. All right, so um, what's, um, the next for you guys. How big are you guys? What's the story? I've been following you guys on Twitter and Telegram. You've been traveling a lot. What's the update on the company? What's the status? So we are, we're uh, as a launch partner of Web3 Data Foundation. Right now there's a token sale. We're uh, in the middle of closing our pre-sale. Um, uh, it's a SAFT um, offering. And uh, we're building and expanding the team as we're speaking. How much are you raising on the SAFT? Can you talk about that or? No. <laughs> no, okay, you won't say the number. Yeah. Yeah, just be careful, it's hard to raise too much. Um, so the foundation and you guys, okay, so how do, I want to ask you a personal question, because yeah. we love women in blockchain, I wear the Satoshi's female shirt as much as I, I can. <laughs> how did you get into this? Because this has been, there's a lot of women coming into blockchain more than people are advertising. So, you know, I'm seeing a lot more uh, women in tech, certainly women in, in crypto, mm -hmm. blockchain and crypto. You guys are doing like almost a cloud DevOps serious venture here. How did you get into this? What's your story? Uh, I've always been a cloud girl. <laughs> I started my, my career building uh, utility computing, uh, enterprise grid computing, right? That's when I was 23 years old and working for Axiom in a data center in Arkansas. And uh, I'm only I'm the only one that wear high heels in data center and get stuck in the vent, you know. <laughs> so uh, that's you know my background. So it's not far stretch from to understand blockchain and the use case of it. If you talk about distributed computing, distributed storage, uh, so it's it's very natural for me to, uh, from technology perspective, get into the space. Yeah. And on um, personal note, is that I really believe decentralization and I believe the change is going to make um, to our life and our. Uh, offspring's life in the future. It's real, you think? Yeah. It's this real. Is a real trend. It's so, here to stay. So what's your vision of blockchain? What are people not getting? Obviously there's a lot of scams out there that have kind of tainted it on the yeah. ICO side, but what are people missing? When you, when you talk to people, you have kind of like, oh, I get it, and then people kind of, I don't really see that. What's the main thing are they missing? What's missing? I think it, uh, it's missing that killer dap to actually get people to realize, oh, it's actually easy to use. I don't have to think about the inner workings and it just works, right? I, my mom still lives in Beijing. I talk to her on Skype all the time. She's not worrying about TCP IP. She's not worrying about mm -hmm. how is this phone getting encrypted or not encrypted, you know, yeah. what's my network bandwidth. She just used the phone and called me, yeah. right? Like I'm, I'm right next to her. I think uh, as we develop building the apps and people don't think about they're using blockchain, they just use it. It's like explaining it to like a, a parent or a, someone who's not technical. Hey, how does the internet work? Can I just type a keyword into the browser <laughs> or a search engine? 
Instead, it's today it's more like, hey, you know how BGP works? And you know how packets move around? Like, like it's so hard to explain. Right. So it's got to be easier. Totally right, agree. Easier. Yep. Totally agree. Well, Tatong, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it. Great update. Exclusive news. Automation, bringing cloud computing and utility computing. Real geeky stuff to the table here. This is theCUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier with Amber Data, COO, Chief Iron Tong Tong Gong here inside theCUBE. Thanks for watching.